initially shaken by, uh, by China, if you remember, announcing retaliatory tar tariffs. But things really took a turn after the US President Donald Trump tweeted that he is ordering, he said, US companies to find an alternative to doing business in China. He said, hereby ordered were his words in that tweet. He also took shots at the Federal Reserve Chairman that he appointed, asking on Twitter, who is the bigger enemy, Jay Powell or Chinese President Xi? And we know, Matt, the markets do not like this. They don't like uncertainty. Uh, what are you hearing from investors? What are they most worried about? What we heard from uh, Jay Powell and all the, the Twitter storm between and the fight between Jay Powell and, in fact, the president, or the fact that the president is retaliating, possibly retaliating, on the China trade? Isa, I think it's all of the above, but really the number one fear is the trade war. The trade war just keeps getting worse. And that is clearly spooking investors because the U.S. economy was already starting to show some cracks. Business spending has been soft. Manufacturing has been weak. We learned that in August, uh, the manufacturing sector in the United States outright contracted for the first time in nearly a decade. And both of those issues are tied to the trade war. So the fact that China has announced plans to put tariffs and to raise tariffs on $75 billion of U.S. goods is only going to make that worse. And the fact that President Trump has now announced some unspecified retaliation of his own again suggests an escalation here. Uh, there's so much tit for tat going on here that it's getting hard to even understand who is retaliating against whom and for what. Um, and the fact that President Trump sent out that tweet that said, you know, we don't need China and we'd be better off without, the, without them. I mean, that was when we really saw the market start to fall. So this all suggests that the trade war is going to get worse, and that makes it really hard for businesses. I mean, they don't know how to plan. They don't know if they should be hiring workers or firing them, if they should be expanding or retreating. And the risk, of course, is that Washington and Beijing, that they take this too far and that they accidentally tip the world economy into recession if it's not already there. Uh, the U.S. may be China's number one single market, that is a fact, but this is certainly a signal coming from China that it's ready to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the United States, even though it is its number one export market by a, a wide margin. Of course, they have very strong exports to the European Union, but I think the, uh, the overriding concern here for China is it's not going to be showing any flexibility to the United States, despite the proclamations by Donald Trump that President Xi Jinping of China is ready to sit down. Uh, it, it did uh, occur to me, you mentioned a couple of these key points, but this came before the U.S. market opened, before the Fed chairman is going to be speaking in Jackson Hole, and on the same day as the start of the G7 summit in Biarritz in France. Uh, this is clearly a message that China wants to send here, uh, and it also followed the same structure on the toe to do analogy that I'm talking about here. Uh, it is going to phase in the tariffs, some in September and some in December, uh, like they did to Donald Trump, and very sensitive sectors as well. Again, another message. Uh, autos and auto parts, a range of other products covering $75 billion. Also, oil and gas products. This is a new market for the U.S. going forward, and this is a very political sensitive issue for Donald Trump, as you know, Paula, but in the farm goods that you singled out, because this is very important to the re-election of Donald Trump in 2020. So if anybody had any doubts that China was willing to back down, show some flexibility, the message here across many, many fronts, the symbolism is extremely strong from Beijing.